Hello world, today we'll be testing out how good of a programmer I actually am by rating one of my popular programs using a library called Pylint. So in video number 113, I made my own digital assistant like Alexa or Siri, and it could only do 10 or 10 to 12 things, I'm not sure. But then I published the code on GitHub, it was the first code I published, and it's doing kind of well. So you can watch that video by clicking on the card here. And you can follow me on GitHub and I'll leave a link in the description. But now I'm going to test um, or see how good the code actually is using industry standards. So, but first, welcome to the 127th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Now, I'm a self-taught programmer, and I have no idea what I'm doing in general. And so, but I keep coding. I keep working towards this uh, Jarvis program, and it keeps working. So I just keep going. But I do know that there are best practices, memory efficiency, um, industry standards, things like that, that I'm probably doing a horrible job at. So using the pilot assesses the code using some of those industry standards and most IDEs have PEP 8 which is the industry for kind of the stylization but Pilot actually um, checks for some some efficiencies so first you'll need to install Pilot so you can just go to your command prompt and type in uh, pip install Pilot like that all right and then once it's installed, uh, you go to the code. So mine is this one right here, main.py. This is where I have my digital assistant. And then you navigate to that directory. So this is my PyCharms project, Shane. And then um, click in here. And then right over that, just type in command. And now you're going to be in your uh, project folder. So now you'll want to do just simple, simply like this, um, pylint and the name of the file you want to um, assess. So mine's just called main. And it's going to run now. And it's going to give you a score of 1 to 10 and 10 being the best. So my uh, code is a 3.56 out of 10. Alright, so this is all of the problems or suggestions in some cases that it has uh, on my uh, thing. So we're not going to go over each one, but um, some of these are uh, easy. So for example, well, let's focus on these right here the wrong import order so let's look at that so it says import web browser should be placed before input speech recognition as sr so let's go to our code and actually fix that so import web browser so the reason why is that's probably a standard dictionary and the standard dictionary should be before external uh oh, i'm sorry external library internal Standard libraries should be imported before external libraries. Okay, so that's this one. From date time, import date, time delta should be placed before. Okay, so let's move that one. Um, here we go. All right, next one, import operator. Oops. random and os so let's move both of those random and os now the reason why they are like that and i haven't learned is because as i add something to it i just add the import library here i don't go in order of which one's internal and external okay uh oh okay third party import cv2 should be placed before from keys import weather so I didn't know that 
So let's go there. Import CV2 should be before keys. Okay, and let's see the last one. Import threading should be before. So threading is definitely a uh, standard library. So there we go. Now, what we're going to do, and it does keep the previous run. So I, I ran this before uh, starting YouTube. So let's check that out. Pilot main.py. There we go. I have no more import errors and I'm at a 3.7 out of 10. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go through many of these and I will keep recording and showing you what I could do to uh, fix this. All right, so let's keep going. Okay, so unfortunately I didn't uh, turn on the webcam and uh, wasn't recording my sound, so I'll voice over. So we're going to run the pilot again and check out our score. So we are at 3.87. And then we're going to take a look at these uh, line too long errors right here. So those are simple. It looks like pilot likes about um, 100 characters. And so what we're going to do is go to the code. I'm writing them down now so I don't have to keep going back and forth and uh, correcting those. So here we are. We're going to go to each one and just, uh, there you go, shorten it by pressing enter. Uh, don't try to tab it out. Just pressing the enter key will help. So this is my concatenated uh, today is the date and time. So that got pretty long. And then um, I'm going to take this out. This is when I, uh, my LED video, I did a thing where it says uh, Skynet activated and it blinked red. So it's always a good idea to get rid of unused code. Um, all right. And then we're going to go down and keep finding the long words. All right, so this I have a comment on top of or, you know, in line with the line. So I'm going to place that above. Same with the line below it. And place that above. There we go. And then we're going to run it again. Now, since we're in the command prompt, you could just press up if you want. Uh, and it'll do the last code, and you could keep pressing up if you typed in a bunch. So we're at 3.87 now, and now let's check it. There we go. We're at 4.1 um, for our score now. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is these single letter variable names like this one. Variable name E doesn't conform to snake case naming style slash invalid name. Now, I don't want to change these because this comes directly from the documentation. So like this one, we're accepting the CV2.error as E and then we're going to print E. And so that E is directly tied to this error. And so I don't want to change that because that came directly from the documentation. So you can change the pilot like this. And I'll put this in the description. And what you're doing is you're accepting regex, single letters, and single numbers as OK. And you can change your pilot to do this. And we're going to do this again later on. Um, so we can run it again. And it will ignore or accept all those errors that have single letters and now we're at 4.37 and those single letter things are gone. Now we are still getting the double letter and uh, you know we can fix that as well to make those more descriptive like operator or list. Uh, that's what that li is and, and we'll do that um, as I make more corrections. All right. Okay so I've made quite a few changes off camera already. 
And now, uh, as you can see above, we're at a 7.99. But now I have a bunch of these CV2 errors, right? That's a good chunk. So that's kind of where I want to focus now. And I did some looking, and the best way to do this is do from CV2, import CV2. Because some libraries have CV2.CV2 is, and uh, you could just quickly ignore that. Um, so let's run the pilot again and check it out. So we were at a 5.42 there. I already ran this. We're at a 7.99. But... Um, now we're getting these CV2 errors right here. And so this is perfectly fine and it, you're, I'm trading off between errors. And so what I want to do is just let uh, Pilot know that this CV2 extension is good uh, on, and you need to add it to what's called an extension package whitelist. So we can add another thing to our pilot, this extension package whitelist CV2 and then main.py. And I'll put this whole thing in the description so you can see it. But basically it's saying that CV2 is on the whitelist. Um, so stop giving us errors. Now it's not going to boost our score because what you're doing is saying just ignore the errors in general, right? We didn't improve anything, but just ignore it. So now we're back to a 7.99 out of 10. Okay, so we've made a lot of the changes and again, apologies for not having my webcam or and having to voice over the previous changes we went through. But um, one of the last ones I didn't know about was this one right here missing function or method doc string missing function doc string and so uh what that is and i've already made that change but um under each one of these i had a comment up here so it looked like this um you know this is used for and apparently according to pilot uh, you're supposed to be using these doc strings and what this is is the triple quotations right here and triple quotations. So you're supposed to do that for every uh, function. And it just tells that's good code. I thought I used comments. See right here, uh, I can delete that now. But it's these doc strings. That's how you um, formally document what each method or function does. Okay, so I've made all those changes. Now the remaining changes that we'll go through, I'm not going to make on this video because I am concerned about the um, how it works um, to see if Shane will still work because I don't know the impacts of making some of these changes. So let's go through and um, let me CLS this real quick and do one last thing, okay? And now let's see are errors that we're getting now and most of these are actually the same one so if you notice it says uh, command 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 and that's because I'm passing what the user says throughout so when I say Shane it'll wake up then I say um, do something that's this command and then I analyze it each time right because this is a while loop and so I don't know where it's going to go, so I am passing the command throughout almost every function. So if, you, if I hover over this and look for PEP8, it says that the shadows name command from outer scope, right? And so that is one of the common errors, and I'm too nervous to change that because I don't know enough. And then this method could be a function, no self-use. And what that is saying is, um, what is checker, do math, these are all underneath my Shane class. Now, if I hover over this using pep8 and say make function from method, it will remove this, take off the self, and put it above here, above all the classes. And I'm also concerned about making that adjustment too, because this def speak, I like to use it because I can use it throughout, right? It's one of the methods that Shane can do is speak. 
and that's my interpretation of object oriented programming so if there are any professional programmers out there that want to help me on my code please uh, download it off of uh, github and I'll leave a link to that in the description and tell me everything that I'm doing that's kind of my dream of this channel is to have people contributing to my codes but nonetheless uh, I am now I now have a code that's according to pilot 8.22 out of 10 and I'm okay with that as a self-taught programmer so we started this video at three point something and now we're up to eight so uh, basically an F and now we're a B and that's pretty good and this list of uh, errors are just repetitive of each other so if I knew how to change this command one it would reduce a lot of these um, same thing when you're using the Python speech even though you're not using the response it's an essential part of its operation same with cap and ret in the class camera if you take out this ret you'll get another even though it's unused you'll get another um, error and so I like the part of the code where it works versus it not working because I don't know enough. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that pilot is something that you're interested if you want to take your code up a notch. Um, by all means, continue to use your IDE's PEP8 to uh, fix things. But also consider pilot or other auto checkers to help your code. So please subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching me build my digital assistant. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.